Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make pastel cookies, aka jello cookies. That's right, you heard it right, jello. So you're going to need one box for the mix and then possibly if you'd like to add the uh, the additional sprinkles on top, another flavor. So we're going to use strawberry and berry blue today. Um, you're going to need one egg. And you know, you always want to keep your egg to room temperature, especially if you're going to use room temperature butter. And for now, we're going to need three sticks, which is one and a half cups. I'm just telling you one and a half cups, you might have one of those giant sticks. And you're going to need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is pure vanilla extract that we get in Amish country, as well as three and a half cups of flour. This is just all-purpose flour, nothing special, and one cup of sugar. Um, there seems like a little less sugar, but there's sugar in the jello, don't forget. And you're going to need a teaspoon of baking powder. And that's really it. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Um... I don't have a special oven. This is just, it's not convection or whatever. It's just 400 degrees. And then what you want to do is you want to get a separate bowl and a bowl for your mixer. So basically you're going to need two bowls. One, you're just going to mix your dry ingredients first. So you're going to add your three and a half cups of flour um, to the bowl with the um, teaspoon of baking powder and whenever I do that I like to mix it up I like just take my spoonula and or if I have a whisk there and just mix it up so that um, all of the baking powder is not going into the mixer at one time it's just more spready distributed evenly or as evenly as possible um, this measuring cup was Jim's grandma's that has been in the flour container so as long as mom's had the flour container <laughs> and it's a half cup measuring cup which is why you see me go in more often um, just so you see I'm gonna do seven half cups because that's three and a half cups now you know the proper way to measure flour is not what I'm doing <laughs> I'm just going in and scooping it out because that's this is mom's recipe and that's how she always did it um, when we, I've taught you guys that you're supposed to spoon the flour into the cup so it's not compacted and then level it off. But if this is mom's recipe and we follow it, we're going to do it mom's way. Okay. Um, she says that there's a lot of different combinations of jello that you could use. Um, what we're doing here, what I'm showing you, well, basically what I'm demonstrating today is strawberry and berry blue. So it's a strawberry cookie with berry blue sprinkles on top. Um, she also has a uh, lemon lime, which is, uh, she uses the lemon flavored jello for the cookie mix and sprinkles the lime uh, jello on top. And those are so good. I've had those. Um, she also will pick strawberry or sh and strawberry instead of um, j with the with the berry blue, um, just to make them more strawberry. Then she'll also pick strawberry and sprinkle them with strawberry banana or make strawberry banana cookies and sprinkle them with the strawberry. Orange and pineapple. So basically she'll use pineapple yogurt for the cookie base and sprinkle orange on top. So those are the combinations she had. Um, Jim distracted me when I was measuring out the flour. So I had to re-measure it um, from the bowl. And I did have, I did over measure. I did. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to double check that I had the right amount of flour in there. Okay. Um, so if you were counting the half cup measuring cup and you saw me do more than seven, yeah, you know why. So that's why I'm just going to add my dry ingredients and I'm going to mix them together. Hey, why not leave the mistakes in there? I'll show you guys that everybody makes mistakes. Just as long as you try to catch them before it becomes a permanent mistake. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to set our dry ingredients off to the side. I'm going to take our stand mixer. I'm using a stand mixer. You can, mom doesn't use the stand mixer. She uses just her regular hand beater. Um, so we know that this recipe works for that, but it's a lot easier to shoot the video um, in the stand mixer. Plus, it's a lot easier t for me to use the stand mixer in general. I don't have to hold my arm up and mix. It's just dump everything in the stand mixer. So we're going to add the three uh, sticks of butter, which again is a cup and a half, and this butter is softened um, to room temperature. Um, actually, it's probably a little softer than room temperature <laughs> um, because the room is not very temperate. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and... We're going to cream that together with the one cup of sugar and the jello mix. So I'm going to add the jello mix. This is the strawberry. Actually, it's not yet, but it's going to be. Um, we're going to mix the strawberry into the dough um, and then leave the blue, the berry blue for the top. Now, mom does is she takes these little um, um, plastic containers 
from like the Dollar Tree or Glad, the little disposable uh, containers. And that's what she keeps her sprinkle jello in. She pours it in there, she labels it, and this way she can keep it from year to year. Um, they seem to last pretty long and don't get stale, which is pretty nice. Okay, so now we've got the three sticks of butter and the one cup of sugar going in as well. Sugar, you don't have to pour method. You just scoop and scrape. Mom likes these lock and lock containers. I mean, they're really nice for scraping. I just, they're too big. They're, my hands are too big. I don't get in them um, very well, I guess is what I'm saying. And my uh, one cup measuring cup doesn't really fit in there as well as the half cup does. So I'm getting a cup of sugar and add that to the mixer slowly as per the instructions <laughs> so let me show you in there okay so the next thing you want to do is basically get your beater on i have mine on a two and i want to really whip that butter up a little bit and then you're going to slowly stream in the sugar um, and really cream those together you want to get them well incorporated um, and then we're going to add the jello um, she likes the way that the, the, you know, it says it's, it says stream it in. She finds a lot of recipes on um, various packages. They'll pop up from time to time, year to year, and she'll save the ones that she thinks she'll like, and she'll try them. And if they work for her, she keeps them and puts them in her recipe book. Um, but we're going to do the same thing with the Jello. You're just going to stream it in while the butter's getting creamed up. And you're, no need for food coloring because there's plenty in the Jello. So these are going to turn instantly pink, as you saw in the thumbnail. <laughs> They're going to be a beautiful uh, pink colored cookie. All right. The lemon ones do turn a, a tinge yellow. Um, the uh, pineapple ones also turn a tinge more yellow than the um, lemon ones. Okay. And now I'm just going to scrape down my bowl and my butter before I add my flour. All right. And how I usually do this, as you see, is I um, scrape down the bowl with spoonula and then scrape it off of the paddle and then just to get even um, distribution of the butter, okay? So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add our egg. Um, I just usually take a dirt, the, one of the dirty measuring cups and I crack my egg into that. Um, a, it's easier to get it in there without the shell and B, you can make sure that your egg is good before you add it to your butter. You always, I always wanna crack my egg into, into a vessel first. Um, and then that's just one egg. And now we're gonna add our teaspoon of vanilla as well. Um, that finish off our wet ingredients. And yes, if you're not a baker, um, if you're a baker, you know this. If you're not a baker, um, I'll let you know that sugar is considered a wet wet ingredient. I don't know why. No, I do know why, but um, not do I do know why. I've heard reasons why. I've heard different reasons why. But I think it's, I've heard because it dissolves the way it dissolves in sugar. And like it's wet, I don't, know, I don't know. Anyway, it works. It helps to cream the butter. If you watch Good Eats, Alton Brown explains it all. Um. But now we're going to slowly add in our flour mixture. I'm just using that same dirty measuring cup. Now, I always start my mixer off on stir, um, so not to wear the flour. Um, we do have a flour guard, but it really uh, only holds back about 60% of the flour. Um, the other 30% will still puff up in your face if you go too fast. So the best thing I've always found is just to go slow. Um, I started on stir as I'm adding the flour, and then I crank it up to one as the dough starts to get thicker and thicker, um, uh, the more flour I add. Um, usually, I only lose whatever I don't, like whatever I drop out of the thing. I don't usually usually use, lose much in the air to this method. Um, so I know we're going to, we're using what some quote unquote sophisticated uh cookie equipment today we're using our stand mixer and we're using a cookie scoop but mom doesn't use these mom uses her hand mixer and she does the double spoon method where she scoops uh, takes a soup spoon scoops some of onto a soup spoon and then like basically they're drop cookies um but you know i i don't got that kind of time no i'm just kidding <laughs> I don't know. I just I don't have the patience, I think. I, I don't know what it is. When you have cookie scoops, once you start using cookie scoops and you have them, you don't want to, like, revert back, I guess. I don't know what, it, what I'm trying to say. So I'm getting everything um, back into the bowl so I can go ahead and scoop them. Now, this, um, you need unlined cookie sheets. 
uh, ungreased and unlined cookie sheets. Um, and um, we're going to get about 13 cookies to a tray. And I believe this yielded... I believe this yielded about 45 cookies or maybe 48 cookies, maybe four dozen. Um, but we'll see. Yep, that's why we keep our fingers clean, folks. That's why we keep our fingers clean. Um, I'm always talking about the incessant hand washing and it was, what do we say, God's first tools. God-given tools. But I don't like to leave any thing behind and I know that's like I joke about it with like watching cooking shows on TV all the time and I'm like I think if this is your first time watching me cook I will say it again if this is your 19th time watching me cook I apologize for saying it again but um, I don't work for the Food Network I don't have a uh, production assistant or kitchen assistant who's gonna do my dishes plus it's I think it's very wasteful when you wash your food down the sink so I'm really going to scrape the heck out of everything. I'm not going to leave any man behind. Um, I always often say, like, I'm just cheap. I'm frugal. No, I'm just cheap. I don't know. <laughs> so now I'm just getting my uh, Berry Blue Jello ready. I'm just using, um, it's, it's really a sprinkling. So if you're only going to use this one time, you could sprinkle it with your fingers. But I'm going to use the quarter uh, teaspoon measuring spoon just to sprinkle it on top to help me out. Because it's little. And this cookie scoop is um, roughly about two tablespoons. Um, they're, the, this one is from the Pampered Chef, and they're not marked with, like, 24 scoop. They're just marked, uh, Pampered Chef used to mark them as, like, large and medium. So um, this, you know, cookie scoops are how many dozen cookies you'll get from, ah, whatever. They're labeled different things. <laughs> cookie dishers, dishers, whatever. So we're going to get, uh, like I said, uh, 13 cookies, which is uh, a row of three, a row of two, a row of three, a row of two, and a row of three. Um, if you want to space them evenly, um, what I do sometimes is I do my rows of three. Make sure there's one down the middle, one on each side, and then space the twos evenly. But these cookies say they need two inches apart, so that's why we went ahead with the 13 on a tray method. All right, and these are large cookie trays. Um, Mom has their they're large okay so now we're just taking the back of the rubber spoonula and you can do this with your fingers if you want because the rubber spoonula is sticky um, I really should have cleaned my rubber spoonula off before I did this um, but what you want to do is you want to flatten the cookies out and this is mom's tip for keeping the jello sprinkles on she said when you leave them in a bowl or when you do the drop cookies when you leave them rounded the um, the sprinkled jello doesn't sit as well so um, go ahead and flatten them out and then we're going to take this I like I said this is berry blue so these are going to come out pink and blue pastel which I thought of this would be like a great uh for a gender reveal party you could do pink cookies with blue sprinkles and, and then blue cookies with pink sprinkles would look really cute too so if you I don't know why I just figured I'd mention that <laughs> so just a little tiny sprinkle it's not a whole quarter of a teaspoon I'm using the quarter of a teaspoon basically to spread across three or four cookies but you just want to get a few sprinkles of them on each and then you're going to pop them into your preheated 400 degree oven in the middle of the oven we're going to cook one tray at a time um, with these cookies all right and you're going to set your timer for this size cookie we set the timer for four minutes then we're going to turn it around and then four more minutes because it's anywhere from eight to ten minutes so after four minutes is up, I know, the time, the magic, the magic of television um, or YouTube, um, my trusty kitchen assistant, who's also my trusty cameraman, is going to turn the tray 180 degrees. Um, if you made these two batches at a time, the cooking time would probably be a little longer, but you would also want to switch the top to bottom and the bottom to the top. We're just making one tray at a time and setting it again for another four minutes, even though he said three on there. We're going to end up being four, I promise. Trust me. Um, but if you make smaller cookies, it's anywhere from um, six to ten minutes. So depending on your cookies, your oven, your size that you make. Um, but these ones were um, eight minutes. We went back and double-checked. All right. And then when they're all done, you want to sit them on the pan for a minute and then de-pan them. 
Thank you. <laughs> my, tr my, my trusty kitchen assistants. Um, and the magic of television, we've waited a minute. And now we're um, just moving them to a cooling rack. There we go. You want to let them cool? That's your prerogative. You want to eat hot, sticky cookies? You can do that as well. You basically want to make sure that they're golden brown on the bottom. These were a little overdone. Um, Mom said the the timing was off on our on our batch first batch because she's not used to making them this big. Um, but once we had it all figured out, um, the rest came out perfect. But um, that's it. So I hope you really enjoy this recipe. Um, those of you who were asking about it, this is it. You got it. And if you try it, I'd love to know. I'd love to know what combinations you come up with. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Share with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making these or any combination of them. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And if you give this video a thumbs up, it would totally help out the channel and having other people see this cookie recipe. And as always, you take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.